you guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Mandy Glam. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. If you are already a part of the Mandy Glam family, then girl, boo, bae, welcome back. I'm glad you guys are stopping back by to watch a video with me. Before we get into this video though, I just gotta turn up real quick. We made it, okay? It is 2021, we in this thing. Bye girl, bye 2020, bye girl, okay? Bye bye, bye bye. <laughs> hey, I'm happy to see 2021. I don't know about you, but my spirit is still celebrating, okay? I got a little glass of champagne over here, honey. I'm still ushering in 2021. I'm just happy to be here. So I had to turn up real quick. You know, I ain't go to the club and nothing like that, but you know, I got to do a little one, two, one, two, eight. And I'm just feeling very positive about the new year. I'm feeling like, you know, I love new beginnings. I love starting over. I love pressing that reset button. Just a fresh start, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you refresh your mind and a good time to reinvent yourself. Ugh, I can just go on and on, but I am so happy to be out of 2020. I gotta take a sip. All right, back to this video. So in this video, this is gonna be a little bit different. I'm not really gonna be talking about a lot of fragrances, but I wanted to create this video, okay? This video is gonna be for my new babies, okay? My new babies that's just now starting out, building up your perfume collection. You've watched a ton of YouTube videos and everybody has a different opinion about everything and this is that and the other. Okay, you've probably heard words thrown around that you don't even know what the hell they mean. Okay, like the word niche. Okay, designer. You know what a designer is, right? I don't think I have to go in, into that too much. You're probably at a point to, you're like, okay, am I a designer person or am I a niche person? So let's get into it, okay? And I'm speaking from my, for, from my perspective. Blah, 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 too much champagne. If you take a look in the back, you guys see I have my fragrances displayed and you can kind of look around and tell that I, for the most part, all you see are designer fragrances. We gonna get into that and I'm gonna tell you why that is, okay? So if you want to know more about designer versus niche, then keep watching this video. We gonna get into it. I feel like at the end, I'll tell you, I won't tell you right now, but at the end, I'll tell you what type of person I am, okay? Well, you probably can figure it out already from the fragrances that y'all see, but let's get into it. Okay, first things first. Let's talk about what designer is and what niche is, okay? So designer is pretty much self-explanatory. It is your designer people. Tom Ford, okay? I have a Tom Ford fragrance here. Dolce & Gabbana, right? Okay. Chanel. These are your designer fragrances. And they're designer because they also make other things. They do other things, not just fragrances like they make clothes they make handbags they make um, shoes and stuff like that so those are your designer people okay so your niche what what is what qualifies a fragrance to be niche okay according to Google and I'm gonna read from Google what a niche perfume is okay Niche perfume is a perfume made by companies dedicated primarily to creating perfume as opposed to perfume from fashion house or designer, okay? Even celebrity scents. I think celebrity scents kind of lean more towards designer, if you get what I'm saying. Niche fragrances, it is just what it says. All they do is create perfumes. That's all they dedicate it to. Now, there are a few exceptions to that. What I've learned, um, because I have a few uh, Lalique fragrances. I think I have two now. Well, maybe one, I sold one. I didn't know that Lalique did stemwear, um, or they do home decor, or something like that, like beautiful figurines and glassware and plates and stuff like that. That's what Lalique does but they also make fragrances, okay? 
Another exception to that rule may be Guerlain. Now you guys gonna have to comment below. Y'all tell me, do you think Guerlain is a designer or a niche? Me personally, I would consider them to be designer. And here's why, because they have makeup. They have a makeup line. I have bought makeup from Guerlain, like the terracotta bronzer and stuff like that. I've bought makeup that had Guerlain on it, okay? And they have a fragrance line as well. So those are the two differences between designer and niche. Design now, access. I think this is kind of where you, where me personally, I think this is kind of the reason why I have more designer fragrances versus niche fragrances. I feel like designer fragrances um, I have more access to and I'll tell you why. Designer, you can buy designer fragrance from anywhere, honey. You can buy designer fragrance in a perfume boutique. You can buy designer fragrance at a department store like Macy's. You can find them in Nordstrom's. You can find them in Saks. You can find them in Neiman Marcus, okay? All the designer fragrances. Now, when it comes to niche fragrances, not so much, right? What I'm finding out is a lot of niche fragrances are very exclusive to online sales, except for a few exceptions. There are some exceptions to that rule because I have walked into Neiman Marcus and Saks and they, I've seen displays of niche perfume companies. For example, Le Labo, okay? This is the Noir 29 by Le Labo. And now, you can find Le Labo in certain department stores, okay? And what I think is very unique with Le Labo is that somebody makes the fragrance right there on the spot. Now again, this was gifted to me, so I don't really know how it works, but my friend that gave me the fragrance, she said the fragrance was made in front of her. So another niche line that would be available to you in the store is Bond Number no. 9. Now, I was shook back in the day, honey, when Sephora started carrying Bond Number no. 9 because I've always only seen Bond Number no. 9 in high-end department stores like Saks and Neiman Markets. I'm like, what? I was like, hell no! What? I ran to Sephora to smell all the bun nines, okay? Y'all remember that? If you are a diehard perfume lover, you know exactly what I'm talking about when Sephora started carrying bun number nine. I was shook when Sephora started carrying Killian, okay? I was like, what? The price didn't change, but nonetheless, they was carrying it, honey, which made it more accessible to me. I was able to get it. It's the point that I'm trying to bring home, okay? Okay, another uh, niche perfume line that you can find in a high-end department store is Maison Francis Kirk Dijon, okay? The almighty, all popular Baccarat Rouge 540. I know y'all have heard it. Y'all, if you've watched one video, you've heard somebody talk about that fragrance. Hence, is why I won't go into it. And I can name other houses that are available to you in department stores, like this one over here. I don't know if y'all can see that, but that is my Wonder Woman 84 cupcake fragrance uh, by the House of Siage. And they are in, I know when I saw them last, they were in Neiman Marcus here in Houston. So you can find some niche fragrances in department stores, but I still feel like designer fragrances are more accessible. Like you can, you can get your hands on it faster than you can a niche fragrance. Also too, what I've noticed is just thinking about it when I was, researching you know the notes and points that i wanted to make on this video i don't see a lot of commercials and advertisements for niche fragrances okay you open up any vogue magazine any glamour magazine any essence magazine nine times out of ten you're gonna see a advertisement for coco mademoiselle chanel okay any chanel fragrance any Tom Ford fragrance, any 
Dolce & Gabbana fragrance. Not only that, you're gonna see commercials. You're gonna see tons of commercials. As a matter of fact, I think I talked about this before. My favorite perfume commercial is the uh, J'adore by Dior when Charlize Theron walks out of the water and she's a vision of gold and she's beautiful and sexy and they playing that Kanye flash and lights in the background. Oh, I love that, that commercial. That is my all time favorite perfume commercial. It just literally, just watching that commercial makes me wanna go buy the fragrance. Even uh, the uh, Savage commercial um, with, why can I think of his name? What is his name? Okay, y'all know who I'm talking about. Sexy, the actor that I can't think of his name. But stuff like that, you know, it's like they're everywhere is the point that I'm trying to make. And hence is why I feel like I have this going on in the background is because it's, I'm watching it, it's going into my memory bank and it's all that I see. It's all that pretty much I've ever saw until I really got into researching fragrances, okay? So I would say that's a, a plus for a designer but a negative for niche. We need more commercials, Niche. We need to see y'all, we need to, you know, Killian has some commercials, but I've only seen his commercials on Instagram, uh, on my feed. I've never seen them like on TV, but Killian does have commercials. Um, but I would love to see more commercials from the Niche people, okay? Give us some commercials, give us something to work with. Um, I would love to see more Niche uh, fragrances in department stores, you know, even places like Sephora. Okay, so moving to the next point I want to make about designer. Now, somebody in designer world that makes these perfumes for designers, they got hip to something, okay? They was like, oh, the niche people, they taking all our money, they coming out with all these beautiful fragrances and things like that, and yeah, they're expensive, but people buying them. These designers have decided that they're gonna start these private lines. Take, for instance, Tom Ford. I'll put a picture somewhere over here so you can see what I'm talking about. I honestly believe this fragrance by Tom Ford, it doesn't take anything away from the fact that it's Tom Ford, but I do feel like it's made more for the masses versus this one. This one is very exclusive, okay? It comes even in a different bottle. It comes um, with a bigger price tag. It's just different. It's just more. I feel like Tom Ford exclusive or private private label or private line fragrances are, they last longer. They're just better to me, but they are expensive as hell. If you're okay with dropping upward of $600 on a fragrance, honey, then knock yourself out. I haven't got to that level yet. I will get there one day. Also, niche fragrances are not cheap either. We talking about a price tag now, so let's talk, go ahead and talk about it. So, not only have designer companies decided mm, they're gonna come out with their private exclusive line too and jack up the price, but niche perfumers have been doing that forever, okay? People like Roja Dove, people like, um, who else is very exclusive and expensive? The House of Oud, the House of Siage, um, these companies are not, these perfumes are not cheap at all, period. They're not cheap. But what the designer companies did, they created an even playing level field, okay? That's what they did. So kudos to them. I still, I don't own any uh, designer exclusive lines. Um, I know some popular ones are Tom Ford, like I said, Lancome. And I want to say even Chanel. Chanel may have an exclusive uh, private fragrance collection. Louis Vuitton too. Those are just some names that are coming to mind that kind of are like, you know, um, what they have, what they would call their their niche line. Okay. 
So the playing field is starting to be real even when it comes to designer and niche. Just keep that in mind. Now, these fragrances like Coco Mademoiselle, you can get this in Ulta, okay? Now, when they started selling Coco Mademoiselle in Ulta, in Sephora, I feel like it became less exclusive. And now I feel like this fragrance, granted, it's adored by a lot of people. I do feel like it's made for the masses, okay? Now, I don't consider the Labo made for the masses, even though a lot of people have the Labo fragrances. Um, I just feel like when you're dealing with niche, you get more exclusive fragrances. I do have a bunch of decants um, of niche fragrances. Like This is a decant of Etat Libre de Orange. This is I Am Trash. Very unique fragrance. And that's another thing too about niche fragrances. They are very unique, okay? This particular fragrance is derived from um, old food, like old apples and old strawberries and old, just old food. But they were able to create something so lovely. This is a very beautiful fragrance, and I do intend on buying a full bottle of this one. Just, you know, an example of how you can get your hands on some niche fragrances, because you can, you're not gonna be able to walk into a department store and get a niche fragrance. Like, it's just not gonna happen, honey. Unless you go in for the ones that I already mentioned, the Bond Number no. 9, the uh, MFKs, and the Labos, and stuff like that, Killians, stuff like that. Then you can get your hands on those. But the other exclusive niche fragrances, not so much. So, the question is, what type of person am I? Am I a designer girl? Am I a niche girl? I would like to say at this point, I'm a little bit of both. But I have, I just so happen to have more designer fragrances than I have niche fragrances. But that's only because I just found out what the hell niche meant, okay? But moving forward in the year, I hope to add more niche fragrances to my collection because um, at the end of the day, I'm pretty much like this. I'm like, whatever I'm attracted to, that's what I like. It could be designer or it could be niche. It doesn't matter if I spray it and I love it and I wanna add it to, com to my collection, I'm gonna add it to my collection. It doesn't matter if it's designer or niche. But this video was for my new babies and I wanted to give you guys a more in-depth conversation about designer versus niche. Neither one of them are bad because there's some kick-ass designer fragrances and some really kick-ass niche fragrances as well. So again, at the end of the day, I think it just, it's gonna boil down to what your preference is, what you like, you know, what smells good on you, how it makes you feel, because again, to me, fragrances are an expression of art. But yeah, I hope this video was informative. I hope you guys got what I was saying. I hope you understood what I was saying. Comment down below and let me know what your preference is. Do you prefer designer or do you prefer niche? And no answer is wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, I follow some of the most beautiful people here on YouTube and all they talk about is niche. And I have, I'm clueless. I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't even know how to find it. But that's gonna help you too. Go ahead and follow some other people on YouTube there's a ton of people that have really, really, really beautiful niche um, collections. And, you know, that way you can get more informative and just kind of figure out what you like. But, yeah, again, comment down below. Let me know what you have most of in your collection, designer and niche. I'm interested to know. Let me know what your favorite designer fragrance is. Let me know what your favorite niche fragrance is. I will tell you guys, my favorite designer house, before I let y'all go, my favorite designer house is Tom Ford. <laughs> he can do no wrong in my eyes, honey. He can do no wrong in my eyes, okay? Tom Ford, no wrong. Now, my favorite niche 
designer. Oh my God. I'm, ooh, that's tough. That is so tough. It's between MFK and Killian. But I'm going to have to go with Killian because uh, I've known about Killian fragrances for years. Um, and I just got introduced to um, MFK, which is um, Maison Francis Kirk de Jean. I just got introduced to that line simply because of me doing YouTube videos and watching other people's videos. Um, but yeah, he, I don't know, it could be a tie. It could be a tie because I went and smelled a bunch of uh, MFK fragrances and I'm just like, ooh. I love them so much. Really, really do. Um, but yeah, when they get that afterpay, like Killian got afterpay. <laughs> it was on, honey. It was on. Okay, MFK. Y'all need to get afterpay for your girl. Okay, so I can buy me some fragrances. I'm just saying. Let somebody know. Okay, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're into fragrances, go ahead and subscribe. If you know somebody that's into fragrances, recommend my channel to them, share my video, okay? Um, don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a video and hit the thumbs up button. We going up, okay? We going up in 2021. We going up. So hit that thumbs up button, okay? Let me know that you like what I'm putting out and that way I know to keep making this type of content for y'all, right? Man, I want to wish everybody that can hear my voice that's watching this video a blessed, prosperous 2021, okay? Nothing but the best that 2021 has to offer. That's my prayer and wish for you guys, okay? Love y'all. I will see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye. Thank you.